Welcome to Film Sesh. My name is Corey Tulliba. Uh, I'm here today with Dennis Jenkins, St. John's point guard, combo guard, guard, bucket, uh, playmaker. Uh, what's going on, man? Appreciate you taking the time to chop it up. No, I appreciate you for having me, man. You know, just just trying to trying to trying to stay, um, you know, mentally stable throughout this whole process. That's the <laughs> whole thing right now. I think this is a good opportunity to to get into your game a little bit and, and kind of show what you can do and bring to the next level. So take me through this possession, because I think, you know, this is more than just like a little combo move. There's a cadence to it um, and there's setup. So so tell me what you're trying to do here when you got a guy on an island like this. So so, yeah, right here, um, I think they it looked like they was in the zone. It looked like and uh, I was supposed to get a screen and um like I said, he switched, and he was trying to play. He was like I said when I was talking about they know my speed, so he's trying to give me the three. He thinking like I can't really shoot the three. So I initially, I was gonna shoot that first one when I first came off at the top of the key. I was about to shoot it, but I kind of felt like I was a little. I wasn't really ready to shoot it right away, so that's when I had to. I checked him. I had to check him. That's where the between come from, and I see what he doing. Then he backed up some more, and then that was just where the side. That's when the I do work on that step back shot, and then that's where the just the step back came into play, and I just shot it. A, you know, yeah. splash, right? A yeah. Splash in in your eye, in your eye. Um, yeah. All right, so so now we got uh, against Creighton, and again, I it, I think this speaks to kind of your creativity. Um, you know, we talked about maybe it comes from playing outside, <laughs> but you know, when when you have a guy like uh, a Trey Alexander, who I think six ten wingspan, something like that. You know what are you what are you trying to do to to kind of make him work on these possessions defensively? Yeah, you know I always um I always try to play off the defense, so I, I'm always like checking people to see what they're gonna do. So I came off the screen, he went up and through, so I know he's late. So that's where the shot fade comes from. And then after that, he's just he now he's chasing me. Now he's doing whatever I want him to do now because it's like. Now I'm just comboing off of whatever he didn't do or whatever he did. So like I said, I, I shot fake. He went for it. I was about to go downhill, but it was a little congested right there. And my big, Joel, he just came right into the screen, and then he tried to go under. And that's when I just stopped behind it and shoot it. Now take me through this one. You got uh, you got Devin Carter here. Nothing mm -hmm. crazy here, right? You talk about getting to your mid-range. Um, but I think that this is probably the most important spot and the most underrated spot to get to for point guards because mm -hmm. it opens everything up. It, you know, if the big is dropped too far, I mean, obviously that's, that's a layup yeah, that you're exactly. shooting. Right. And, exactly. and, and now, you know, after you hit a shot like this, they're going to have to step up. Guys are going to have to rotate. It's going to open up the weak side. Um, mm -hmm. But you do have a guy like Devin Carter, who's, you know, playing from behind there. So take mm -hmm. me through, you know, what it was like playing against him, um, you know, his potential lottery pick at this point, and, uh, yeah. and and just the art of operating out of the pick and roll here. No, yeah, I definitely respect Devin Carter because, um, you know, not too many players can play um, two ways now, even, even going into this draft. Like, I feel like, you know, just a lot of people – um, that's pros. I mean, they just can't play both both sides of the ball. So, and he's one of them guys that can, and you do it at a high level. So, I always respect things like that. Uh, so, and me being a competitor, I always brought my A game, no matter who it was against. But you know, you really got to bring it against against guys that you really respect and guys that you know are really good. And you know, we I I knew he was probably going to the NBA. So, I, in my mind, I'm thinking. All right, let's see what I got now. Now I want to put my put my skills and put everything to the test for me. So that's kind of how it was playing against a guard, a guard like him. Um, and then this this play right here, this was the out of, side out of bounds play. I came off like I said. Um, you know he can't just go under, so that forced him to go over. And I tried to come off tight right there to get him chipped by the screen. And then the big is way at the restricted area. So that, like you said, that is just like a layup. Now you, you talked about like the area um, in between the free throw line and the circle. And here we see you get into that kind of floater. And, you know, I like this sharp cut playing off two, um, mm -hmm. which I think you see guys like Jalen Brunson and, you know, all those Villanova guys in the league, they all, you know, are really good at playing off two. Um, but I think this floater is a, uh, is a big 
part of a, a guard's bag, especially at the next level. So uh, tell me what goes into kind of the decision to, all right, I'm going to pull up maybe at the elbow because I got room or I'm going to get a little bit deeper into the paint and, and float it over the big. Yeah, so like I said, um, for a guard like me, you know, I'm always trying to get downhill. And so once I do that, once I get the defense going with me, I always know I can put on the brakes, and I know I can do it really fast. And that's where the stop on the down pull up comes into the to 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 the play. So right here, I um, rejected the screen. I got into the paint, and like I said, he was waiting right at the restricted. Um, so it was like he met me right there. All right, so that's my limit. So now I'm to now I'm at a great spot, and then that's when I went into my hop step and took my floater. So like if like you said, if he was even higher up. That would have been a mid range, but mm -hmm. I felt like I got across the lane, almost close to the restricted. That's where I can shoot my floater. Mm -hmm. And who's that over? Is that uh for you know soon to be uh, Johnny? Was that was that was that yeah, Kadari? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's Kadari. Yeah, that's Kadari right there. Um, yeah, he's he's tough too. Now, uh, and why I think that is such an important play for the next level is because once you get that floater now i mean you're a great playmaker now you can read it and you could turn it into like these little lob actions you see trey young do it you see Emmanuel quickly uh do it you know guy who new york area for a long time with the knicks so um take me through this possession and what you're reading to to so that you're you make the decision to make the pass instead of getting that shot off yeah, so this game, you know, he was he was affecting a lot of my shots, um, whether I was shooting a layup or a floater. And so I'm like, you know, he jump, he's gonna jump at everything. That's that that's what I realized. I'm like, all right, so no matter what I do, he's gonna jump and try to block it because I had some where I was going down the lane, like and I didn't see him. I was wide open and I throw it up high and he come out of nowhere and block it. So I'm like, okay, bet. So I came down the lane this time, and I'm like, okay, I see you playing me, but I also see my big rolling against a small guard. So I'm like, if I just get him to think I'm shooting, he's going to jump, and then the basket's going to be wide open. So that's that's where that went. Like I knew if I went up like I was shooting it, he was just going to jump, and I was going to take him right out to play. Now talk about, you know, we talk, first of all, these courts and these jerseys. Yeah, that, 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 that brought me back. Sick. That was sick. That was crazy. That was crazy. And we didn't even know until we got – we knew he was going to wear the jersey, but mm. we didn't know they was going to do the court like that. Yeah, that happened. When I saw that, I was like, oh, man. Like, again, this is like old school Big East stuff right here. I love it. Now, you talk yeah. about, you know, the, the three-level scoring. You We see you knock down threes. Um, we saw you get to the mid-range. We see the floater. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you do at the rim. Right now – you see the blow by speed. So take me through this possession, what you're seeing that you know you can get to the rack. So I'm looking. I see one guy on the right side. Um, you know, they probably watch film and they know this play. So everybody is loaded up on the left side. That guy was supposed to come off a double stagger and get the, get the catch and give it back to me and come off a screen. So I, know, I just kind of lowered him to sleep. Like I just, I just really walked it up the court. I walked it across. And then I'm like, okay, I see no help. The big is guard. He not even, they didn't even see the ball. The 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 weak side, they didn't, they didn't even see it. So I'm like, oh, he's, he's this is easy. Like this is an easy one for me. So I tried to steal it. I tried. That that was my that was my goal. Now you know we just saw that that's against UConn. You guys played them a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't get any dubs, but you played them tight every game. When you're watching the tournament, you're seeing this team kind of wax <laughs> to these tournament teams and you guys big controversy you guys didn't get in how did that yeah. how did that make you feel going through that man i'm not gonna lie i was i was very I, I i did i was hurt and i was mad just because i'm like you know the way that we play the way that we was playing especially at that time of the year um i thought that's what makes a selection committee go towards that team like, yeah, we know what we did in the beginning of the year, but this was, you know, like, this was brand, this was 14 new guys. So it was mm -hmm. like, it was going to look like that in the beginning. And yes, we had some games where I, all of the games that we lost, we had, we were winning at halftime, I believe, except for like one game, except for the Seton Hall at Seton Hall. They, they was killing us the whole game, but it was even close. So just, I mean, man, that's, that's how I felt. I just felt like at that time of the year, I think we had won like six straight. 
or seven straight before we lost to UConn in that in, in that tournament. So, um, we you know we was thinking like, yeah, we good. And then some upsets did happen that we didn't need to happen. But at the same time, man, I'm just like, who wouldn't want to see that team that like the team we just had? Like, who doesn't want to see that team in March Madness? We press the whole game. We play fast. We got a Hall of Famer, arguably the best <laughs> coach in college basketball. Like, so it's just like, why wouldn't that team be in March Madness? Now, I think, you know, if if you talk to scouts or, or teams and there's one area of your game that offensively the scouts would say, you know, they want to see improve a little bit, it'd probably be you're finishing at the rim a little bit. So exactly. take me through this possession here. And what would you do differently if you can get this one back? So right here, um, I think I would have just went straight up. Like, because I think that's Tyler Kolick under that rim. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to block my shot. So I'm like, I went right to the middle of the rim and it took the ball all the way back to the right side. When I could have just went, I could have even went into his chest or just mm-hmm. right up over him. Because I'm like, he's not, he's not blocking the shot. No. And and I'm taking away um now now the officials they really don't have to call nothing. So now I could I could put the pressure on them. Either they call it even if they don't call it. But it just that's a that's a great play. They know I'm I'm taking it strong to the goal. So now next time maybe I do get a call that's probably not a foul. Just just little things like that. So I think I could have um definitely went in, either went into his chest or went straight up. Because you see he actually moved out the way. I like, mm-hmm. didn't want a foul. He does. He doesn't want the foul, and he's not trying to block the shots. So I could have went straight up. Yeah, especially, I made, I made especially because you get Chase Ross behind you. So like now you go into him. Now you're getting hit by two guys, right? And just you know, now you're at the line where you're an 85 percent shooter, and you get to the line a lot, like you you have, and you knock them down, um, make them pay. But especially, yeah, like you said, like it ain't Ryan Kalkbrenner at the rim there. Exactly. It's, it's Tyler exactly. Kolek. Exactly. <laughs> it's Tyler Kolek. You don't got to avoid it. You can go right into him. Um, exactly. Right. But, you know, look, you, you got some touch and, and some skill at the rack. And you see that here where, you know, you do go kind of into the body and, and finish through again, that little split in the double. Mm-hmm. So you've shown it, right. You have it. And, and is that, are these the kind of things just like working on your body? You talked about getting the focus a hundred percent on basketball. So, like, knowing, like, is this the time you're like, all right, I can get stronger, I can work on these finishes, like, are these the kind of mm-hmm. things, like, that are part of the focus? Yeah, 100%. Like, like the way I'm feeling right now, I could really try to take off on, on a play like that. You know, like, just something different. Or now I know either I could play off two feet and get, and get, and get the foul or get an even better finish, an even sure finish. So, it is definitely – um no, like that's the focus. That's the focus because, like you said, I know if anything, it, that that's the area I, I need to um t- continue to pr- to improve on. But the thing mm-hmm. that's so the the thing that's most interesting about your game to me, um, obviously is is you talk about your ability to make plays, and there's a nuance to passing. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's you know you can. You can read the game and make quick reads, and you can manipulate the game. I almost sometimes I refer to it like um, a freestyle rapper versus like Drake. You yeah. know, like a lot of guys can read and make quick decisions, but like, can you make a hit song? Like, can you manipulate yeah. a ball screen? All right. So, um, take me through like when you're running pick and roll because you do a lot of little nuanced stuff on this possession here. So yeah, right here. Um, I know they try to ice it towards the sideline, so I'm just – I'm really just trying to rock him one way to – like, I was about to come off, and as soon as he jumped it, I crossed, and then now now I'm basically playing, like, they both are playing me. And then I know that bottom guy, he not even – look, he not even – he didn't even mm-hmm. see the ball. So it's yeah. like nobody is back there at the rim. So now I just got to engage that big. That was my whole thing. Make him think I'm trying to drive down here, and like I said, because – I am a great scorer. He had that's why he stepped up like that and had to respect me. And then the big is rolling. Joel rolling to the goal wide open. With momentum. I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ready to jump through whatever down there. Yeah. <laughs> He's you're gonna end up on the floor. Um yeah. and yeah, because even if there is a tag there, and you know, we'll see your ability to read the floor later. Like if if somebody is in the paint, like you can make that corner hit too. So it 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 really it's you know, poison. that's really what it is. 
it's pick your poison 100%. Um, so, all right, now what I, I like this one too, again, like basketball is simple sometimes, like, but uh, to me, what stands out about this pass is the placement where yep. you throw it up where nobody else can go get it. So, um, mm -hmm. how important is it to like, you know, throw it to where guys can catch it away from the defense? No, nah, you know, that's so funny because the whole year when I used to throw Joel lobs, uh, I would throw it to the to the top of the gym like to the I would really make him get up to go dunk it because I'm like look I'm not turning it over throwing a lob because you know some coaches may say oh that's not a sure pass right so I'm like okay it's either it's going out of bounds or he gonna catch it and lay it in or dunk it so uh right here it's like I know I know for sure nobody's gonna catch it but him it's on him to make the play after that but he's right at the rim so for me, I always just try to put people in the best position possible to be successful. So that's why, like I said, I threw it high like that. I know, no, even like you say, even if he tried to get there, he's too little. Like he, mm -hmm. he, you can't go through that big body to get the ball. So that's why I threw it up like that. Now this one, th these are the kind of passes though that are like the impressive NBA level reads because Ooh. you know, like these are the next level reads. These are the reads that the young guys. Lottery picks, raw mm -hmm. potential, right? That we hope that they can make one day. Mm -hmm. These are the reads you're making. So, so tell me, you know, what you're seeing and, and how you're reading, you know, the entire floor, so you know to make this weak side pass. So I think, like you said, so that guy that's guarding that corner, right? He wasn't in the game when I just made that first pass. So they telling him on that bench. Take away that roll pass, right? That's the same exact screen we just ran. Mm -hmm. And now he now he's looking at the ball. And now he ran all the way to the lane from the corner to try to tag that big right there. And that was just easy. Like that was just like I'm I'm literally looking at it. Like my eyes are literally up watching him. Like and, and that's a testament to Coach P as well, too. And that is some natural abilities as well. But he always told me to you know, you that's who I'm reading. That's my read right there. Take me through this one here, though. No, of course. Take me through this one. Um, again, a lot of crafty stuff coming mm -hmm. off the handoffs, the screens, change of pace. Take me through it. Yeah, no, like I said, man, you just – when they have to respect you as a scorer, right, I, mean, pretty, I know they watch the film, so the big is trying to step all the way up. It's like I say, he don't. I'm gonna get. I was. I would go all the way to the goal if he didn't step up right there, and then I just keep him engaged as long as I can. And I know nobody's on that backside. Like I could see the guy. He's where like that's our shooter right there. So I know he's not leaving him. The shooter in the corner. So nobody's right there to help. And then when I get into the paint, I just like I said, I just put it to where I know. I trust where he was at. Like he know. He know I'm gonna get him the ball no matter. I don't know how to get it there. But he know that ball was coming. You see, he was ready. He was waiting on it. Like he knew the pass was coming. Yeah, man, it's it's all showing on the film. But now let's get into your defense, uh, because I, I think that again, another aspect of your game that that you become underrated on. It sounds like you you take that side of the floor personally. Yeah, most definitely. So yeah, take me uh, take me through what what you're trying to do when when you got um, you know you're on an island and and you got somebody just trying to come at you. Yeah, so right here, um, I know Trey Alexander is great, right? But every time he go left, he pulling up. So I know he wasn't going all the way to the goal to shoot a left-handed layup. Like, I don't even know how many times he did that this year, but I was just on the film. So I'm knowing our goal was to keep him off his right hand and play the pull-up. So I just took the, he tried to bump me off. I took it in the chest. I kind of like bumped him back with my chest. And then I just contest the shot. I got mm -hmm. off the ground. As, when he got off the ground, and I contest the shot. And, like, or I, it's like it's like that's when the game – that's when I know I'm in the game. Like, when somebody try to come at me and just, you know, score on me because that gets me into the game. Like, mm -hmm. I really don't even care what happened on offense. Like, I'm knowing if I come down and stop the best player, yeah, it's like – my, my confidence really go through the roof for offense. So now you're just having fun. And Take me through this one. Basketball. Again, top, potential top five pick, Steph Castle. What are you trying to force him into? So um, I knew I knew he's pretty much a driver. He, he really he really wasn't shooting it that just that good yet. And so right here, 
I knew the screen was coming. I tried to get through the screen and just get my chest back in front of the ball, or or if not, a chest on chest. So now when he bumped me, I'm ready. I could I could bump back with my chest and then just contest the shot, and that's going to his left. So I felt um I was going to be ready regardless. And then my big was obviously there to help me because he weren't able to get a full head of steam to where he can just go and try to take off. So that was that was my goal right there on this play. All right, so now Villanova, kind of a, a physical, you know, wing. Take me through this one. You remember this play? Yeah, I definitely do. I, actually, <laughs> I said something as I blocked it, too. Yeah, but, okay. No, nah, but no, because we, you know, it's so funny because this whole week before we played them, we was practicing these type of plays right here. Um, the, they, they like to bump you. And then they like to uh, try to try to just muscle through you and, and lay the ball up. So right here, uh, tried to cut him off his right hand, tried to keep him on that side of the goal or that side of the court. And then I just wall up at the rim, and then I saw I could block it. So I went to block it. I got my yeah. chest. Like I said, I tried to get my chest square with him. And then mm -hmm. he bumped me. I tried to take the bump, and then I just went up and blocked it. Yeah, good timing, good physicality playing uh and i think again you know even looking back at like talking about your your layup attempt uh against tyler when you you know on offense like you don't shy away from physicality like you're a physical guy it shows up on defense so you know i, I think even you know possessions like this show the optimism for you know like you embracing that uh on on defense as well um now take me through this possession here um quick shifty guard Take me through what you're trying to do here and what happens so, here. So right here, right, he got me. I kept looking for the screens, um, and I kept expecting kind of like me to have help. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I, I kind of – like I kind of – you see right there, like I'm like, why did my big – like for me – There's no low man. Power, yeah, I'm like, why, why are you running right back to him? He's going to the middle of the paint. He's not a lob threat. He doesn't really score that good. So I'm like, for me, you can drop all the way back under. Like, he can be under me, ready to help mm -hmm. me. If, cause if back he passes, pedaling. Yeah, if he passes you right there, too. So for me, I just think knowing who you're playing with and just knowing how you got to play. So right there, like I said, that was on me. I could have, like, I stopped my feet. When he stopped his feet, I stopped my feet. And I should have mm -hmm. got below the ball and made him snatch back and shoot and maybe take a step back shot, and then I can test that. So right. that's that's what I would have did different right here. I should have got below the ball. I stayed at that level, and that's why that has he worked. Right. But again, you know, the the physicality playing up because I think you know at the NBA level, it's not like all right, can you guard your position? It's mm -hmm. like can you guard when somebody hunts you on a mismatch. And as a rookie, like I don't care if you're a freshman, I don't care if you're a senior, you're a rookie when you get to the league and they're gonna hunt mm -hmm. you. So what you're trying to do when you play these physical guys yeah right here i'm just trying to show some fight yeah, that's all i can do that's i just want to fight i just want to fight and compete that's that's all i'm thinking right here like when he get this ball i'm knowing he's gonna try to come into my chest so i'm just ready to take that bump and you see i didn't really move back to where he could just turn and just shoot an easy shot and so i did my job like even if he would have made that I'm mm -hmm. right there. Like, I'm right there contesting both hands up, all chest. So I'm just like, I, I did. I did and and I think right using there. that length is something that you do really well um, consistently. So now one more against Creighton here. Um, again, showing your switchability. You start off Trey Alexander, future mm -hmm. pro. Switch on to Baylor Shireman, future pro, and a big dude. Like, under, like, Ooh, sneaky, yeah, nah, sneaky, pretty right. big. People don't know that until, until you play against them. Yeah, he's sneaky big, sneaky strong. He can hoop for sure. Um, yeah. But tell me what, what you're trying to do on, on this possession. Yeah, so right here, um, right here, he they kind of went right into the ball screen, right? So I kind of just, like I said, I cut that angle off of just giving up an easy mm -hmm. blow by layup. So when mm -hmm. I do that, you know, they got nothing but a step back or a reverse pivot into the shot right here. And I got off my feet and I contested. And so we're going to live with the results. Even if he was to make that, I did my job. Like, that, that, that was the best defense that I could play right there. Um, now, now, take me through this. Because, I mean, I, I think guarding on the ball, guarding ball screens, all of that, 
obviously mm-hmm. super important, but it's equally important to guard off the ball and be able to chase guys around screen. So um, what do you try to do when you're trying to like guard guys who you know are going to be running off a ton of movement? So right here, you su- I'm, su- I'm supposed to get into his hip early. So where that screen is not – like he still – he even came off wide. Like the, the big move, but he came off wide and I didn't really touch him. So – to, to actually guard that even better. You see how wide he came off and the big slid all mm-hmm. the way into me? So it's just like, that's my goal, though. That's my goal, to push him as far as away from that screen as I can and to get skinny, kind of to get on that get on that outside hip and then right after the screen, get back in front. You know, of whether it's offensively or defensively, you know you're going to bring it on the defensive end. You know all the skills that you have. You know what you have ahead of you, what you can work on. Um now, you know, look, if uh, I'm sure I know you're going around to workouts, you, t- you talk to teams at Pitt, but, you know, if, if I was, you know, an executive and we're sitting down in an interview, you know, why should I invest in you at the next level? Uh, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a perfect locker room guy. I could, I could fit in any locker room, um, prefer tough locker rooms, very competitive locker rooms. Um, like I see, not gonna be, not gonna be a problem. No trouble, nothing like that. So all the off court things are taken care of, and then on the court, I'm just looking to to help or or to play any role that will get me on the court that or that'll make the team better. So you know, for me, I feel like I can fulfill any role. So that's honestly, that's why I'm like, you know, I just feel like you know, taking a guy like take taking me. You're gonna get a great person, a uh, great player. You know he gonna he gonna and he gonna give it his all on both ends. So every single possession, I don't take no days off. Um, I go hard. I'm very competitive, and I just love to win. And like I said, I love come down to I love to compete. You know, I just love to compete. Uh, that's the I think that's that's what really that's what drives me, man. Just really competing. At a, at a really high Look, level. man, I'm looking forward to watching your journey through the rest of this process, you know, through the rest of the year, through the rest of your career, man. I'm rooting for you. So I appreciate you taking the time, chop it up, talk through your film and letting everybody, you know, see how you think and, and read the game, man. Yes, sir, man. No, I appreciate you for having me, man, so much. I appreciate that. That's love, man. We got a Johnny on here with me. So it's this, this was great. I appreciate you.